Hi, Math 65. This is the video for lesson 15, which is located on page 67 in your textbook. You have already taken, I'll bring out my assignment sheet here. You've already taken your, your time test before you watched probably video for 14 or during the video for 14. So if you did your practice problems and your parents checked them and you corrected any that needed it, you can put a check mark there. And now we're on lesson 15. Okay, the um, lesson 15 in your textbook is about making a multiplication table. It tells you that on page 48 in your test and worksheet book, there is basically a blank to fill out for a multiplication table. If you know your multiplication facts, you don't need to do that. Basically, it will give you a version of a multiplication table. This is one I have that goes, and so for those of you who don't know how to use a multiplication table and might need to, we're gonna um, learn how to do that real quick. So you have, you see your rows of zeros, all the different things. When you use a multiplication table, if I wanted to find out what three times three was, I'd come across the top to three, I'd come down this column to three, and then I'd pull my fingers together, and then when they meet on nine, that is the answer to three times three. Okay, we'll allow multiplication table use for um, probably until fall break in October, and then after that, we probably won't use those in class anymore. And when I say in class, I'm talking about for your time test. I'll probably allow you to use them until October. And then after October, no more multiplication tables. So if you have one, or if you wanna make the one that's located on page 48 in your um, test and worksheet book, you can do that. So uh, the multiplication table just helps you if you're not quite totally firm on your multiplication facts yet. But the goal is we need to get there as soon as possible if we're not qu there quite yet. And our time test are really important to do that. So that is the beginning of lesson 15 is make a timed, I mean, excuse me, make a multiplication table. So going into what your, um, part of your practice problems, I'm gonna pull the book on screen so that you can see, uh, let's see here. So let's look at Letter A, let me make sure I have that on the screen for you. So letter A, it's gonna tell you to use a multiplication table to find where the row and column meet. Write that number as your answer. So, and we have a four and a five. Now, if you know how to multiply without a multiplication table, this is simply saying, what is four times five? What is six times two? What is three times six? And what is eight times 10? Okay, if you need to use your multiplication table for that, that's fine. Um, and then it has different products down here, which we'll go into in a minute. So if we were going to do four times five, we would go over here, let me make sure I'm back on screen, come down to five, go across to four and pull my fingers together till they meet at 20 because five times four is 20. That's the gist of how your practice problems work. Okay, the other part of lesson 15 is talking about um, some of the properties of multiplication. Um, and I forgot to get a dry erase marker. Hang on just a second, let me grab one. And let's see if this one will show up really well. So for multiplication, we have, there are some neat things that multiplication, you can do with multiplication numbers. And that's what we're gonna be talking about. Okay, first of all, let's talk about if we have a multiplication, we have, so we have three, yeah, that's showing up good. So you can see three times four, which I know is equal to 12. So this is kind of vocabulary. You're gonna to need to know what these individual numbers are called. 12 is called the product. Your answer to your multiplication problem is the product. Both three and four are called factors, okay? So you'll need to know that both numbers being multiplied or if there's three numbers or however many numbers are being multiplied together are called factors and that the answer to your problem is called the product. 
So that is important for the rest of your math days, all through high school and everything else. You will need that. There is multiplication has uh, some rules that we're going to go through. So any number times one does not change the value of that number because six times one is six, no matter what number I put here. If this number was 16, then my answer would be 16. No matter how, what number I take with when I multiply, unless it's zero, when I multiply it by one, the answer is, well, no, that applies for zero because the answer would be zero. So the number answer does not change. The, so this is called the identity property of multiplication. The way I remember that is the identity, like our identity is who we are. So when I take 16 and I multiply it by one, I don't change its identity. It stays the same exact number. So that is the identity property of multiplication. All of these are in your textbook on page 68. You'll need to refer back to them probably during your homework, but I just wanted to show you some examples of that, okay? Now, if we remember, we'll go back up one here to three times four is 12. If I swap the four and the three, four times three, my product is still 12. So when I, ch remember these are called factors, the numbers being multiplied together. When I move my factors around, I move my three over here and my four over here, it does not change my product. That is called the commutative property of multiplication. The example I gave for commute is when you leave home and you go to school or when your parents leave home and if they are working out of the home and they drive to work, it's called their commute. So they left one place and went to another place and it didn't change the product. So you move it around and the product stays the same, is the commutative property of multiplication. Another example, another property of multiplication we're gonna discuss is any number times zero is zero, okay? No matter how large, no matter how small the number, when you multiply it times zero, the product is zero. That is the property of zero for multiplication. So a large number, if my number was really large, like 150, 150, and I multiply it times zero, you don't have to do much work to figure out that the answer, the product is zero. So the identity property is the one where you're multiplying a number, let's see, times one, and it does not change the value of that number. It keeps its same identity. Identity property of multiplication. Multiply a number times zero, and the product is zero always. That is called the property of zero for multiplication. Same of those. Move your factors around, and it does not change your product. That is called the commutative property of multiplication. So in your, your practice problems um, for this lesson are on page 69 in your textbook. And we kind of worked through, because you were watching the video with me, we kind of already worked through this first one together. And on these products, if you know your multiplication, you can go ahead and E, F, G, and H will be pretty simple if you know your multiplication. If not, flip over. please use your multiplication table for now until fall break. Then if you um, remember what we just talked about, any number times zero, the answer is zero due to the zero pro property of zero for multiplication. Any number times one does not change the value of the number due to the 
identity property of multiplication. Okay, so you'll want to do A through K, but we've already done a few of them together. And um, then you'll just continue on for the rest of the week. You'll use your um, assignment sheet here. Now we've got, you'll do your practice problems for 15, have your family check them, correct them as needed, mark that off, and then you're good to go for Friday on what you would have done at home anyway, which will be on lesson 15, which we just learned about. If you have any questions, have your parents call me or email me or text me. My um, phone number and email is on the front and back of your binder. Bye, guys.